The Coin Lady channel is pleased to have you back. The value of a diversified portfolio of digital assets is something we got to discuss in this episode, guys. We will discuss the latest developments with Consensus Ethereum, the Free Pass ETH Gate, and the Ripple vs SEC update. The second part is already under progress. Then we'll talk about Enbridge and how the XRP ledger will link everything together. To cut to the chase, please take a seat and unwind. Why don't we go into a Bitcoin that's now 3%? Allow me to reevaluate, because this morning it was down 3%, what remains, though, is that 1.31%. A theory is now $65,034. Oops, a 2.26% increase. With USDCs coming in at 99 cents and XRP Boiboy, the USDT market cap is $3,558 which is unchanged from its dollar peg. It's rather slim at 49 cents. My predictions for the future of the markets, which I shared with you earlier today and maybe even yesterday, are becoming increasingly hazy. If it occurs, the dip might be no more than 10 to 50 percent, and at most it could be 7 percent. However, that's just how it is, we thoroughly enjoy receiving bottoms. As far as we can tell, this is the lowest point we can reach. This profound, everlasting thing will not be timed correctly. We will not succeed in pinpointing exactly where job is going to be. Let XRP's price drop from 49 cents to 46 pennies and Bitcoin's price rise from 65 to 60,000 here. Why should one care if XRP is purchased at 46 cents or 49 cents in the end? It will be irrelevant when discussing $345-10 XRP. You were dollar cost averaging, and that's all that matters. And you were purchasing when prices dropped? That's the mentality that takes over, isn't it? That's how most people who are new to cryptocurrency invest. They begin to wonder, what if this is the last dip, because they believe the trend will continue to rise. Things don't function that way in the Bitcoin markets, prices rise and fall. For that reason, DCA is the best friend you could ask. 4. I see. So, why is it a good idea to spread out your holdings in digital assets? This is significant, right here. The cryptocurrency market is very popular. They refuse to branch out. The error occurred in 2017. Allow me to narrate the tale. Additionally, you will likely experience emotional distress and feel sorry for me because of it. In 2017, I was just a one crypto sort of man, I was completely ignorant of the market, the technology, and everything happening at the time. I foolishly believed that my money would be multiplied by a factor of 10 the moment I invested it. Everything was going to be just like Bitcoin in 2017, cheap, plentiful, and efficient, in my mind. I hit $17,000, $18,000, just then, that's what I believed, I was completely mistaken. What a difference 7 years makes. Since the beginning of this year, when I began to acquire those additional assets, I currently hold, I believe, anywhere from 15 to 20 different cryptocurrencies. If I had been as well informed as I am now about diversifying my investments and the markets in 2017, I would have been 15 or 20 millionaire. So, you're curious about the reason behind the wrap and what transpired. Chainlink, in case you didn't know, used to be incredibly inexpensive, just 17 cents, 20 cents, or 30 cents. Currently, $15 is being channeled. If I had just done my homework and realized there would be more than one victor, I would have made a ton of money. Am I now implying that you should not sell your XRP if you receive a text message or AP to acquire the items? My point is that everyone ought to have been buying weekly during the three-year bear market. Whether that weekly bias is $5 or $10 is irrelevant to me. Once a week, for three years, that builds up. I was responsible for it for Casper for around 15 months. Currently, I'm working on it for Quad. It's been around 15 months since I started doing it for XLM. The frequency is bi-weekly. The end result will be that my DCAA will be so low that other assets will outperform Chainlink if and when these things actually shift, it's not about getting more coins for your dollar, what matters is that you diversify your holdings among several cryptocurrencies. 
If one dot outperforms another, or if one bar outperforms another, or if XRP surpasses everything, then I will be well positioned. The reward those coins will provide you is the important part. Then what am I trying to say? It's easy, you might have bought that 50 cents worth of XRP with 10,000 of them instead. 10,000 that is a stunningly beautiful number. However, let's pretend XRP only goes from point A to point X, and you buy Casper, Polkadot or Chainlink, which is worth more than XRP at the moment, let's say $15 for Chainlink. Imagine having 10,000 XRP but only 200 Chainlinks. Finally, though, your bottom line will look much better if Chainlink does a 5x or 10x. Accordingly, it makes no difference how many coins you really possess. And to be really honest, it took me approximately a year and a half to get over that, all because I was constantly concerned with the quantity of money I was receiving back. The question that ultimately matters is the number of X's the return will generate for you. JJ says, is $100 worth it to you, Lincoln? Update, everyone I am about to tell you. A $100 chain link is pre-programmed to strike $100 with a 100% success rate. When it comes to chain link, I'm guessing we approach the 2 to 250 mark. This is not financial advice, but it is about $14. I will not instruct you. What am I doing? I'm going to tell you. Take it or leave it, the choice is yours. You have it. If XRP doesn't drop by the end of 2025, our sister coin, Yahoo, will release a brother coin the following year. Virtually everywhere will recognize stable coins as lawful tender. Jeremy Lair from Circle makes excellent predictions, and he's usually correct. From 7 to 7 trillion. Is. That the figure, where is the 3 trillion, or something similar? Using just stable coins? Do you have any idea why Ripple is pursuing this? One of Cather's dominants, without further ado, let's get into the Rippleverse. SEC's lawsuit status stood out when moments they couldn't ignore. The message is clear, consensus has triumphed. However, questions still persist. Does this imply that the SEC does not consider Ethereum to be a security, or that it does not consider consensus offers and sales of Ethereum to be security transactions? If someone were to ask Gary Gensler about the current state of MetaMask and staking, what would he say? Can the government really regulate in this way? Yeah, since they're deciding who will succeed and quit. The video concludes with that. Do me a favor and hit that subscribe button. Muchas gracias, depart.